Hi, Andrew from Marker Tech here with another instructional video. Today we're going to be using the Switchcraft Pancake Connector to make some effects pedal cables. These are great cables for guitar players, bass players to connect all their pedals. Uh, you can make them at the exact size you need. You can make them at the exact orientation you need depending on how your pedals go. Uh, today we're going to be using the GS4 by Canare. Uh, you can also use the GS6, it's a little bit thicker, but both of them fit inside these connectors. Uh, I like the GS4, it's a little fl more flexible, low profile, really great for pedal boards. So some of the tools that we've got for today, we've got a couple of wire strippers, some bigger gauge and some smaller gauge. We've got some needle nose pliers. We've got our flush cutters. Got an awl to pick out the shield. A flathead screwdriver for the flathead screws on the housing. We've got a piece of 3 16 shrink here, about two inches for some strain relief. We have our pancake connector. Safety glasses for when we're soldering. We have our lead-free solder here. Uh, I've, over on the side, I've got my soldering iron. And over here too, we've got a vise for later when we need to put the cable onto the connector. And of course, heat shrink gun for our heat shrink. All right, so let's get started. The first thing that we want to do is take off the outer jacket of the Canare GS4. What I like to do is I like to take it uh, up to the connector and kind of dummy it up to see where it's going to lay. And then I can make a little mark with my thumb where I want to take the jacket off because I want the shield to sit right inside the cavity here um, once we connect it. So I made a little mark there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the biggest setting on my wire strippers, the 10 gauge. I'm not going to go all the way through. I'm just going to cut in just a little bit, turn it halfway, cut in a little bit again, and then pull off. This way we're not nicking any of the shield. So now we have our uh, braided shield exposed, so we want to pick this out so we can twist it together. So we'll get our all for that. And we're going to start at the very top of the braid and then just do a straight line down to the jacket. Some of these braids are a little cumbersome, so feel free to take your time. You don't want to pull out too many or scuff too much. The GS4 has a nice tight braid, so. And then once you have the braid separated, you can push it over to the side. And then we're going to pull it down uh, to expose the insulation. The insulation has this black sheathing over it that we want to remove. That's conductive. If we leave it on there, there's a very good chance that our cable will short out. So what I'm going to do is take the smaller gauge wire strippers and go to about the 18. And all I need to do is just press into this sheathing just a little bit turn it again and then I can pull it right off because we don't want to cut into the insulation. So now we have our insulation exposed. Um, we can now twist our shield. We can pull that straight a little bit and then do a nice tight twist from the jacket up. And now we can kind of put it up against the connector again so that we can see how it lays and see about how much we have to expose of the center conductor. So while that's there, I can kind of make another little mark with my thumb. And now I'm going to use the 20 gauge setting to take off the jacket. And now I have exposed the center conductor so we'll give that a nice tight twist as well. And now our cable is ready to be tinned. So we'll bring our solder in. Get a little bit of solder on the tip. And then drop it onto the center conductor. You want to use just enough to flow into the copper. You don't want to have any blobs. You also don't want to have too much copper exposed. You want to try to get it all covered with the solder. 
with the shield, we don't have to go all the way to the tip because we're going to trim this back a little bit. So now we have our cable prepped and ready. Uh, now we're going to want to get our con connector prepped and ready. So we get our vise out. Drop this guy in. Get my glasses on. I'm going to be using a bit more solder now. I like to keep some solder on the side rolled up so I don't have to keep pulling it from my roll. So now we have two places we need to prep here on, on the uh, connector. We need to prep the center hole there where the center conductor is going to go and we need to put some solder on the shell where the shield is going to connect. And like I said before, we're going to do it down in this recessed area here. Now there's a lot of metal on this connector so it's going to act like a heat sink when you put your solder iron on it. That means all the heat is going to dissipate around the entire surface uh, and not really stay, stay centralized. So it might take a little bit longer to get the solder to flow on that spot. I have my iron turned up just a little bit more uh, just to help that out. Um, but be patient with that. But know that once you do have the solder on there, it's going to be very hot for a few minutes. So you might want to give it a few minutes to cool down before you continue. So we'll first get the center hole, a little solder on our iron, touch it to the hole, and then drop our solder in. Again, not too much. And now again, we'll put a little bit on the iron, and I'm going to press it flat down right on there, a little bit to the side. And like I said, it's going to take a little bit for, to get warm enough. We can start flowing the solder. It'll ball up a little bit at first, and you want to just leave the iron there until you see the solder spread out a little more evenly. Great, now we've got a nice little pool of solder there for our shield when we go to connect it. Again, I'll remind you, this is a very hot connector right now, so be careful with it. You might want to wait a few minutes before you actually make the connections. What we'll do right now is see if we have to trim back our leads a little bit here. That's where it's going to sit. So we see we can trim that shield back. So that way it's not, there's no danger of it touching the center pin. So that looks about good. So I like to connect the shield first because that's kind of underneath. So you don't run the risk of uh, melting the insulation on the center conductor if you do this first. So first I'll press my iron onto the solder that is on the shell and get that flowing again. Again, it's going to take a little bit longer for the, for the whole surface to get warm enough. So you just let it sit. Place your center conductor where you want it so that you can then press the shield down. So now we've got a nice connection for the shield there. You might even want to wait a minute now before you do the other connection because the cable can get really hot too and you don't want the insulation to melt and uh, cause a short. So it's fine to wait a few minutes after this connection as well uh, just to make sure everything's cooled down. So now we just need to get our center conductor soldered down, put a little on our iron, press it in, and there we go. We have our connection made. So now we want to put the heat shrink on. Um, if you're doing the first connector, you can put the heat shrink on now because there's nothing on the other side. Once you're doing your second connector, make sure you put that heat shrink on before you do any of these solder joints so that it's ready to go. So I'm going to slide that right up, have it come as far as I can up, touch the shield there. That way I know I'm giving some good strain relief. I'll take my heat gun now, make sure it's not on too high of a setting. Then you give it a little fan and go around, take it away, a little fan, take it away. That way you get a nice even shrink. This is especially important if you have lettering on your heat shrink so that it comes out clear. All right. 
So now our heat shrink is on there. All we have to do is put on the back shell. Um, we're going to take this out of the vise. We'll see. Still a little hot. So we have our back shell here and two flathead screws. So we'll get our screwdriver out. All right, this is okay to handle. And you don't want to tighten it down all the way yet. Get that other screw in there first. That way you know the metal lines up on each side. You don't have any openings. All right, reposition it a little bit so it's nice and even, and then close it up. All right, and there you go. We have successfully put a Switchcraft pancake connector onto some Canari GS4. And like I said, when you go to do the other side, make sure you put your heat shrink on first. That way it's there and ready to go once you have your connector on. But like I said, these are very versatile. Uh, you can do whatever orientations you want. I had done this one so that it could plug into a top jack and then go into a side jack. So uh, it really depends on what your pedal board has and what you want. But that's what's great about doing these uh, by yourself. You can make them exactly the way you want them. Of course, all these products and almost all the tools are available here at MarkerTech. Uh, so give us a call and we'll help you get started. Thanks for watching.